Child, and I'm pleased to be with you virtually to uh, present to the International Conference on Computer Science and Information Technology in beautiful Vancouver, Canada today. Uh, the title of my presentation is Managing in the Next Normal After COVID-19. And I do have regrets uh, of not being able to, to be there and to uh, present live to you today. Um, of course, with travel restrictions, uh, keeps, uh, keeps me away from uh, being able to join uh, the conference in Vancouver, a city that I have had uh, the opportunity and pleasure to, to travel to twice. Uh, also for conferences, and uh, know it's a wonderful city, beautiful surroundings, and uh, and uh, would love to be able to uh, to be there with you and uh, enjoy Stanley Park and perhaps uh, get to uh, Victoria Island again. Um, even even if um, circumstances had allowed, uh, we, I did run into a scheduling conflict because uh, of. Um, uh, uh, my mother-in-law, her celebration of life is going to be uh, on Saturday the 29th when this presentation is taking place. So that's why uh, doing it ahead of time. So I wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to join the, the conference in person uh, at, uh, anyway. But uh, I hope for those of you that were able to, to go to Vancouver that you're having a wonderful time and, and uh, I know it's a, a great event. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with me, let me give you a little bit of background. Uh, I've, I've been involved with ARCC uh, for some time, uh, over a decade now, and in fact I am the founding and continuing editor of, of three of their academic journals, uh, the International Journal of Managing Information Technology, the International Journal of Managing Value and Supply Chains, and the International Journal of Managing Public Sector Information and Communication Technologies. And uh, very, uh, very excited uh, to, to be working with such a fine organization. They've been a great resource for myself and I know for, uh, uh, for many, many others around the world with their family of journals and conferences they put on. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that you are a part uh, of, of the conference going on right now. Um, in, in terms of what I do, uh, I am a professor of management at Southeastern Louisiana University, which is just outside New Orleans, which uh, many, of, many of you uh, hopefully have had a chance to, uh, to, to, to go to and uh, will again uh, very soon. Um, I pride myself on being an act, very active uh, strategic management, uh, management technology uh, professor, uh, consultant, and, and researcher, and uh, have been involved with uh, a, just a, a wide variety of, of projects and topics over the years, uh, generally at the intersection of, of technology and, and organizations, and looking at how uh, developments in technology uh, and, and, and society of impact organizations and provide uh, opportunities uh, for, for them. And the, the current COVID-19 pandemic uh, is, is a little different area for me to, to be exploring, but uh, what I have found is that it, 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 it fits in line with a, a a good bit of what I've done in the past and, and, and in terms of advocating uh, for how management uh, should adapt to changes in technology and changes in society. And I do believe, I do believe uh, after um, a year and, and some months uh, in the United States and, and more than that globally uh, of dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, that uh, we, we are going to be approaching not what many have just simply referred to as, as, as the new normal, which would be just going back to, to, to work and to uh, gatherings uh, and, and, and 
shopping and restaurants and and other and, and sporting activities uh, as they were in the past, maybe with some uh, modifications uh, after the pandemic. What what I see is is not a a, a new normal. Uh, I do believe we're at the precipice for for some real changes. Certainly, uh, not the case globally uh, with what's going on in India and in other parts of the world, but in the United States and and in in North America generally, we see optimism that the pandemic is being controlled with declining case numbers and with vaccines. Um, a great deal of success on vaccines in the United States, uh, not, not full success uh, because of vaccine hesitancy and, and uh, some social media disinformation. But uh, certainly, certainly that is starting to turn the tide and we've seen a, a good amount of, of, of not just reopenings, but uh, return to, to normal operations and you know, we see restaurants uh, going to full capacity. Uh, we see uh, the relaxing uh, just recently of mask mandates uh, almost across the board. Uh, and so there is that feeling that 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 normal is is returning. I do believe, though, uh, that we're not going to be in a new normal. We're going to be in a next normal. Uh, it's going to be a changed environment uh, with, with changed people, ourselves, uh, from the pandemic experience, uh, and ideas, and new, new ways of, of doing just about everything. Uh, we, we've had an opportunity now to really question what we did before the pandemic, and then with our experience during the pandemic, of well over a year of having to do things in, in uh, often ad hoc, uh, very different ways than in the past, but all across the board, uh, we're, we're seeing that the, the length and the intensity of the pandemic experience and the fact that these new patterns were, have been ingrained upon us, that we we're finding uh, and questioning about the ways we worked, the ways we shopped, the ways we uh, ordered food from restaurants, uh, uh, the way we uh, partook, partook in social events and sporting events and, and, and so forth. So it, we really have been through an experience that lasted long enough to develop new routines and then now saying, okay, well, things are back to normal, we're, there's a hesitancy to, uh, with a lot of us uh, to go back to what was the pre-pandemic normal. And that creates, that creates changes and it creates challenges. Um, certainly one of the, the, the primary changes going on is in the way we, we work. Uh, I think the pandemic really, really exposed uh, to where uh, we, we've had people who have been full full time remote workers and and not not the people who are gig workers not the people who are who are, who are you know doing a small business out of their out of their home uh we're talking about full time employees who are working remotely and before the pandemic in the United States we had roughly about 5 million people who were employed full time uh, who who worked remotely full time? Uh, of course, the pandemic saw the numbers you know skyrocket uh, into the tens of millions, and so I, I do believe going forward that uh, with so many individuals having experienced the benefits of of working remotely and. Of course, the, the new buzz acronym is, is, is WFH, working from home. And it can be working from home. It can be working literally from anywhere. Uh, anywhere there is an internet connection that is capable of doing what we're doing today, uh, high-speed uh, connections uh, for video conferencing and, and, and such. So um, it, there, there's going to be an explosion of, of, of people who will say, okay, for a year, for 15 months, 16 months, 
I was able to do my job remotely just as well, if not better than I did in person. I want to continue that. Uh, the surveys that have been done show very, very strong sentiment for that among workers. Workers who are willing to take pay cuts in order to continue working from home. Workers who will say they will, they will, they will switch and switch jobs if they're no longer allowed to work from home. Um, there's there's strong sentiment be, uh, for w maybe not working full time from home, but working a substantial portion of the time from home, and that that's where we enter into the area of what are what are becoming known as hybrid work arrangements, where whether it's going to be one day a week, two days a week, three days a week, um, people will will work both at home and in the office, and and that that is going to be become the norm, uh, I believe, uh, for tens of millions of workers uh, in this next normal environment. Uh, anywhere, any any job that requires uh, a great deal of concentration. Jobs were formerly done in cubicles. Jobs that were done in isolation, largely, uh, where you, you weren't needing to be in a group setting. Uh, and as we've learned now, a group setting can be done virtually and going forward, even meetings that are going to be held in person will probably have a virtual component to them. And a lot of meetings that formerly we thought we have to do in person to be effective, uh, uh, we, no longer, uh, we no, no longer will feel that's the norm uh, from a year of, of Zoom experience, uh, having meetings of all kinds online. Um, there's benefits to working uh, from, from home, working uh, remotely in terms of the time that's recovered primarily from the, 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 the lack of having to, to commute, uh, recovering those, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours a day uh, of commuting time uh, is, is really transformative. Uh, it can improve people's uh, quality of life uh, in terms of what they do for themselves, uh, in terms of exercise and, and uh, other activities, what they do with their family. Uh, a lot of people have discovered, you know, there is a there is a real upside uh, to not the, the uh, to not spending the time uh, in the car or on the train. Uh, at the same time, uh, the 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 numbers that are coming in in terms of what working remotely means in terms of retaining employees. Uh, uh, having more satisfied uh, and happy uh, employees uh, are, are quite impressive. Uh, and so that's something that companies are going to be looking at uh, uh, going forward uh, quite strongly. What are the downsides uh, to working remotely? Probably something that, that all of us can relate to, particularly those of us uh, in, in the higher ed business. Uh, uh, you can really relate to, to, to the two principal downsides that there can be a lack of connection. There can be a real lack of connection, uh, whether you're talking about with your coworkers, uh, with your managers uh, in the in the uh, in the corporate environment, uh, and whether you're talking about students in the um, uh, and and colleagues in in the higher ed environment. That lack of connection can be can be really disturbing uh, and 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 hard to overcome for people. And 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 that does have. Uh, some significant downsides in terms of uh, uh, mental health, and that's going to be a concern uh, going forward because there, the feelings that I'm isolated uh, from 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 colleagues and coworkers and students and, and just other individuals uh, is quite is 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 quite concerning, and it's going to be a challenge uh, going forward. The other downside is tech. Uh, we've all experienced, uh, you know, tech issues, shall we say, and uh, we know that uh, the, 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 even though we have wonderful technology that allows us to, to, to work remotely, uh, fascinating articles that I've run across in terms of what if, what if the pandemic had occurred in the 1970s or 80s or even in the year 2000, uh, we, we, didn't have, we didn't have 
nearly uh, the kind of technology that would have allowed uh, work and the economy uh, to, to, to go on. And so uh, we're fortunate in a way that the pandemic happened uh, when it did, but technology is going to be a huge issue going forward. Um, in terms of uh, the challenges going forward, um, it, this is a fascinating area. It's, it's too much to talk about today, but uh, but the, the 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 fact that we're it, with more and more individuals certainly not going to be commuting to an office five days a week, uh, even if it's just reduced commuting uh, to one, two, three days a week. And then with uh, increased numbers of people working full time who will continue to work full time remotely, uh, you really are going to have a significant impact in terms of uh, uh, the decline of, of and I, I like this term that I came up with, the commuter industrial complex. Um, it, 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 you know, you, you think, OK, people aren't commuting. That's 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 good. You know, it's good for the environment. There's less uh, uh, less uh, carbon emissions. Uh, there's less environmental impact from our commuting. That's good. There's some downsides too. Uh, you know, the what the what the what this is going to mean for commercial office space. Uh, there, there's been forecasts that this could you know this could really really significantly hurt uh, the demand for uh, commercial office space. Uh, it also can impact not just commercial real estate, but residential real estate, because particularly if you're going to be in a in a in a hundred percent remote work arrangement and there's no real need to go into an office on a weekly basis, maybe on a monthly basis, maybe on a quarterly basis, you can locate wherever you want. Uh, you know, and so we're gonna have uh, significant migration. We're already seeing it to some degree now, whether it's going to be temporary with the pandemic uh, waning uh, or whether we're going to see some reversion to the mean, but people are, are out migrating from cities. Uh, they're getting farther and farther away from city centers and from office, uh, office locales. Uh, they're feeling that they can, they can locate uh, in areas that are uh, uh, better cheaper perhaps uh, out in the suburbs and the exoburbs and even in r r rural communities have seen have seen a boom in their in their real estate markets and so this is going to be very interesting uh, people have to make you know law, <laughs> law, uh, real estate uh, is a law, residential real estate is a long-term commitment and so what people do uh, in reaction uh, to that uh, to to the change in their work arrangements if they feel it's permanent uh, will have uh, significant um, uh, changes and impacts on, on the real estate market. Uh, touched on the environmental implications. Yes, you know, it's good in terms of pe there's going to be less, uh, less, uh, uh, less gas uh, consumed, uh, less, uh, uh, less carbon emissions uh, from uh, vehicles of all types uh, being used for commuting. Uh, so the environmental implications are good. If you look at what are the implications of us not commuting, uh, you begin with like the car industry. If there's less driving, there's less need for cars. Um, if there's less need for public transit in, in uh, urban and suburban areas, that could really put a strain on, on uh, uh, train and, and, and bus systems uh, across the country. And then you have a cascading effect. Um, what this does to service businesses, what this does to service businesses, we, we do have a commuter industrial complex. And if you think about all the, the businesses that depend on us going to, to and from work, whether you're talking everything from McDonald's drive throughs for breakfast to uh, restaurants and, and dry cleaners and, and service businesses of all types, uh, located uh, in downtown areas and in all, and in areas where where offices uh, are plentiful, a huge impact on on service businesses, uh, and of course that can be countered because we have uh, a growth in terms of home delivery of food and and and, and restaurant uh, delivery uh, that cater to the more homebound uh, worker. Uh, all of this is going to have a significant impact 
on state and local governments uh, because their their tax revenue uh, is going to in in most cases take a negative hit. Uh, if you look at you know d uh, declining uh, demand for office buildings, office space, um, you're going to have declining values. Uh, if you have declining uh, home values in in areas, uh, that's going to be a, a significant concern for property tax revenues and so forth. So you have huge implications across the board of this simple thing of us not commuting as much uh, a, a, as we did prior to the pandemic. And the, 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 you know, the trends and uh, uh, all point to uh, us having some form of, of, if not remote work, hybrid work going forward. And so uh, these are each of these uh, are, are huge issues uh, that are, are going to be needing to be explored uh, both in academic research and very practical research uh, in the coming years. Okay, what I want to talk to you about for the remainder of, of the presentation is, is, is something that, uh, that I've been working on. This is, uh, th because this is a fast evolving topic and, 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 and we're going to see over the next few months, certainly over the, 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 the rest of 2021 and into 2022, we're going to see companies develop all kinds of, of strategies for uh, returning to work uh, safely, uh, and then who is returning to work, uh, how much they're returning to the office, uh, and, and this, there's going to be a need for uh, a new way of, of thinking about how to manage. And that's what I am very interested in with each of these points in what I'm going to call the 10 C's for managing in the next normal. And I think as one who advises and, and, and researches on, on the impact of technological and social change, I think all of these areas are going to be important for those who manage, whether they're the CEO of a, of a large company, the, the proprietor of a small business, the president of a university. All of these are going to be important in terms of developing a, a new way, uh, a, a, a new managerial mindset uh, for managing uh, in in this in this next normal. So let's let's quickly talk about each of the uh, each of the ten C's. The first is connectivity. Connectivity is essential. Technical technical uh, uh, connectivity, is, is, as we know, is 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 a lifeline today uh, in terms of uh, being able to to work remotely. And so, we're going to see uh, a, a, we're going to see a, a, a some real changes uh, come about in terms of of looking at how. Uh, workers and their devices uh, w work with the organization, uh, how much technology uh, the organization needs to, should provide, uh, who's paying for it, uh, and, and that's a huge issue today. A, a lot of companies, and those of us in universities know, have gotten by on the cheap uh, in terms of uh, us using our own devices uh, and own, our own connectivity. Uh, to be able to work remotely. So this is going to be something that's going to have to be ironed out. It, it's still, a, it, it's going to be a work in progress for some time, uh, even as uh, and, and IT managers you know, lay awake at night worrying about uh, the security challenges uh, of all of this, of being, uh, of having um, uh, work spread remotely rather than done uh, in, a, in, a, in an office environment. And so all that's going to need to be uh, uh, to be addressed uh, going forward very seriously. Uh, communication is is going to be far more challenging uh, than than in the past. Um, we're, we're, we're for a, from a managerial standpoint, it's going to be a matter of of, of really looking at at communication uh, in a in a new way, and not just communication. Uh, between managers and workers, uh, but between workers themselves, how can I, as a manager, really foster the communications that are necessary uh, for folks to, to 
to get work done, but also to feel included, uh, to feel a part of the organization, and, and how do I help how do I help improve uh, the, 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 the communications environment? Collaboration is, is going to be a key uh, in, in all of this. How do, I, how do I, as a manager, go about fostering collaborative relationships and, and, and results? And a lot of that is going to be um, deciding, you know, just how work is going to be done and how much that's going to be controlled by the manager versus going to be controlled by workers themselves, uh, teams of workers, and, and, and what, what is going to be a key point uh, going forward is, is being able to ensure that we have uh, collaboration going on, uh, that we don't, we don't lose um, collaboration by having people working remotely. And then, and, and, then, and that, we'll, we'll talk about this on the next point, how do we, how do we go about um, measuring collaboration, uh, not just in terms of results, but in terms of process? And then how do we allow employees to self-manage uh, their, their collaboration? And that comes down to, to coordination. Uh, managing the complexities of coordinating work and workers in the next normal. Um, it's a lot easier to manage, uh, let's face it, uh, when you have uh, all, all employees in the workplace uh, in, the same, in the same location. Uh, just, by the, just by nature of, your, uh, of including remote work uh, makes, makes that uh, a more complex task. And then in terms of coordinating uh, people who are going to be on the, uh, not just remote, uh, remote 100% of the time, but coordinating those that are going to be hybrid workers. And, and uh, all of the, the research to date shows that it would be, it, it's advantageous to allow um, groups, teams to uh, more or less self-manage in terms of, of when they're going to be in the office, you know, uh, so, so that we're not, uh, we're not having people in the office uh, in it for, for work that can be done uh, remotely. We want to have people in the office together uh, in, 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 so they can maximize their, their, their collaboration uh, together uh, so they can self-manage and, and say, okay, if we need to be in, uh, you know, these two days this week, let's let's do these two days this week. And and so, how to to what degree do we let that degree of control and coordination be delegated to workers? That's going to be a huge uh, uh, point going forward. How do we maintain the organizational culture? Um, one of the things, again, in terms of, of looking forward, is is how do we how how do we maintain that 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 sense of community, uh, that sense of of of, uh, of continuity with workers who may may not see each other uh, you know, routinely or, or or if ever. And so being able to, to foster uh, uh, a sense of oneness, a sense of, uh, of, of identity, and, main, and not just uh, maintain the, corp the corporate culture, but, but enhance it uh, with, uh, with, with remote work. That's going to be a, a real challenge uh, going forward. Construction. There's going to be a, there's going to be a, a, a lot of construction going on. Uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the office of the past is going to need to change. Uh, and and how, how much space a company might need is, is going to be a real issue going forward. Uh, it, may it, may, it may change over time, but certainly the types of spaces that uh, uh, companies are going to be uh, wanting uh, in much more use of, of, of collaborative space, uh, more spaces for uh, s uh, gatherings, uh, both inside buildings and outside buildings. And that's a, that's going to be a huge issue uh, for 
uh, for for office buildings uh, in in downtown areas and so forth where that might just not be available. We 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 haven't we haven't put a lot of focus on uh, having meeting spaces outdoors. Certainly now we look upon outdoors as a much safer uh, environment. And again, a lot of these perceptions about social distancing and and so forth that we have developed during the pandemic are going to persist and will become just kind of the way we think about things. We, we may not want to be in uh, tight spaces and huge gatherings. The other thing is we certainly don't need uh, the, 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 the cubicles uh, of the past. Uh, all that needs to go by the wayside because that kind of work uh, can be better done uh, remotely. Uh, compassion. Um, this comes a little far down the list, but it, it, it is going to be a huge issue. Again, I mentioned earlier about the mental health aspects of all this. Uh, there's some real concern uh, about workers feeling anxiety, isolation, uh, and for their, for their mental health, but also uh, in terms of um, uh, be feeling disconnected from the organization and what that can mean. Uh, for them in terms of job satisfaction and, and retention going forward. And so uh, it's going to be incumbent upon managers and HR, and HR is going to have a huge uh, role to play in this, in terms of, of uh, uh, not just having programs and training uh, to help uh, with the, the mental health of, 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 of all workers, but particularly those uh, working significantly remotely, uh, but having a, a real true sense of, of compassion uh, going forward. Controlling, yes, this is going to be a very, very different environment uh, than we have operated in the past. So how do we, how do we, how do we, how do we go about managing? Uh, and and if, if we are managing a a pri primarily remote workforce, it's going you're going to have to manage. Uh, in a different way, uh, looking more at, at results than by uh, observation. Uh, how do you develop uh, the policies and procedures for, um, uh, for deciding who's going to be able to work remote work uh, and, and how much they're going to re remote work? And then there's some issues about uh, discrimination against those who work remotely uh, and, and those uh, it, it gets a little uh, complex, but in terms of uh, the, the rule of thumb, would be that you know if you're if you're if you're not seen uh, because you're a remote, remote worker, uh, you're oftentimes passed over for pay raises and promotions and and opportunities uh, on the job, and that that falls more so uh, on 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 women and minorities. And so that'll be an issue going forward for how companies will uh, will deal with that. The last two here, creativity. <laughs> We're going to need to be much more creative in our managerial thinking. Uh, we, no doubt. Uh, we're going to need to uh, uh, have a, 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 a real strong uh, bent toward uh, finding creative solutions to the unique situations that uh, we're going to encounter because the, the, the world of work will be forever changed uh, based on the pandemic. And I, I do sincerely believe that that's going to be a uh, call upon workers and, you know, ideas from everyone uh, in the organization on how to uh, how to come how, how to go about uh, best managing the organization and finding solutions to the to the problems uh, and opportunities that are going to be coming forward finally the last C uh, is character uh, and for for managers I think it's going to be really important in terms of being a model uh, for how, how how to be an effective worker in in this new nec uh, next normal uh, if you show a real hesitancy toward uh, uh, having remote meetings and, and virtual meetings and uh, allowing people to have uh, different schedules, um, that's that's going to be transmitted to your employees. So uh, if if you the, the, it's going to be incumbent upon 
managers at every level, from frontline supervisors all the way up uh, through the organization to the, to the top executives, to, to, to be a model for employees to be open and receptive to the new ways of working and, and not, not demonstrate uh, you know, being wedded to, uh, to the ways of the past. So for the future, I, I know we all are uh, very interested uh, from our personal perspectives, from our professional perspectives, uh, and, and truly from our economic perspectives in terms of, of how all this plays out. What is, it, what is, what is the future for organizations, uh, for workers, and for this commuter industrial complex? And uh, that, that, that uh, employs a lot of people. It means a lot of things to, uh, to, to a lot of sectors of the economy. And it's going to be very, very important uh, to, to keep tabs on all this. And I do believe there's, there's a great opportunity for academic uh, uh, research and insights to play a role in helping to, uh, to shape all this. I'm working on a project now uh, dealing with how the public sector uh, governments uh, in the United States uh, will, will be adapting uh, to, to the world of remote working uh, going forward. And I'm very excited to see uh, what transpires. Uh, I, think, uh, I think when we look back uh, at, at the pandemic, and that's a nice thing to say that we can look back, hopefully, uh, but it's going to be a real inflection point. It's going to be the black swan uh, that, is, that changes uh, the world of work uh, and, and really had us catch up in terms of uh, uh, how we work with the technologies available uh, and uh, enabled us to, uh, to discover a new, a new path, a new way of working. So with that being said, that will uh, conclude the presentation. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately cannot uh, take your questions uh, having, re having to record this, but uh, I welcome your feedback. Uh, please email me uh, at dwild at selu.edu uh, if you would like a, uh, a copy of the, uh, the slides or the original uh, content that uh, the presentation was based on. Be happy to, uh, to send that to you. So I wish you well with the remainder of the conference. Good luck with your own presentations. I hope you uh, I know I, I hope and trust you'll find very interesting content. And I, I hope to hear from some of you as uh, potential authors on the, uh, the AIRCC journals that I edit. And uh, so with that, I wish you a good day. And I look forward uh, to hope, I will say, I look forward to being at the next annual conference and presenting in person. So, uh, so we'll see you uh, in 2022 in person.